Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for the second in my Elite Dangerous Exploration series. I am one stop away from my first um, point of interest on this uh, adventure of mine which is VY Canis Majoris um, and that is of particular interest to me because it's one of the largest brightest stars in in our known galaxy I think in the in the real one there's a couple that are larger but I don't know if they're accessible in Elite Dangerous so before I jump into the next uh, system I'm going to take a, a quick look at this star which I've already been to apparently Interesting. I've um, actually already been to Canis Majoris a couple of years ago in a Cobra, so perhaps I've already passed through this system, I don't know. Um, but anyway, the uh, the scan data wasn't what I was interested in. The distance from the star was what I was interested in. So uh, this is a typical um, orange-yellow star, and I think size-wise it's fairly typical as well. So the game has put me 3.6 light seconds away. Um, now, I want to use that as a rough comparison uh, for when I jump into the next system, um, a rough comparison of size, because I know the game won't put me close, it won't put me this close to the surface of Canis Majoris. Um, it, will, it does a kind of algorithm where it will put you at a distance relative to the star size for whatever reason, which is a bit of a shame, but I just want to get a, get a baseline um, for distance before we continue. And as well as that, just, just take an observation of the texture of the star itself, that wavy turbulent animation that's going on on the surface and just see if that looks any different on the on the bigger star. So that's pretty cool. Right, as you can see I have bumped into a few stars along my <laughs> journey already and I've already depleted one of my heat sinks. Um, I do have trouble judging the distance in VR, but uh, that's enough about that, let's get on with it. So, where is my next stop? There it is. Frameshift drive charging. So yeah, I have managed to unfortunately cook a couple of my modules a little bit. But not to worry, I'm still in fairly good shape. I've only travelled, uh, <laughs> I haven't even gone 2,000 light years yet. But <laughs> So, V-Way Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars in our galaxy, one of the brightest stars in the galaxy, a red hypergiant. Let's see what this looks like. Intriguing to see what the experience is like in VR as well. And bloody hell, there it is. <laughs> That's just, it doesn't even zoom in, it doesn't even approach you, it just appears. So, um, let's target it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm nearly 6,000 light seconds away. Compared to the 3.6 light seconds I was on the last system, uh, the game has put me 5,900 light seconds away from this star. Wow, so that is humongous. It is ridiculously massive. Um, and as well, um, what I was saying about the other um, aspect of judging how big a star is is by what its surface texture is doing. So you can see that the wavy turbulence is almost static on this star. Let's just pull over. Um, there's not a lot of movement going on. There is that you can see it but it's fairly static. It's really dense. There's these huge seas of orange and that just really uh, accentuates its size. I mean as well as that the star is physically big. It, it feels a lot bigger than, um, than uh, the other stars that you encounter uh, through typical systems. So, yeah, I'm really, really, really far out. So let's just move in a little closer. And I'm fuel scooping, I'm fuel scooping it over 5,000 light seconds away. And that's, that's the kind of distance you'd expect to find planets and stations in the outer reaches of a typical system. And you get those really large systems where you've got to travel over a hundred thousand light seconds to get somewhere and you think, oh god, sod that for a laugh, I'm not going to bother. And the other thing as well is that um, 
portrays this star size is the, the speed that I'm doing. I'm, I'm now going at 100 C, which is much, much faster than I would be usually if I was orbiting a star. I'd usually be only doing about 20 or something. But I'm actually going like the clappers, and, uh, and this thing is just very lazily drifting past the window. Which uh, is, of course, because it's so vast, I'm having to cover lots more um, space in order to in order to move past it. Right, let's have a look at what the galaxy map, not the galaxy map, sorry, the system map says, information-wise, about it. <laughs> oh my god, that is just... Oh, wow, this is so huge. So, let's go over here. Okay, so the text says that it's uh, a red supergiant. Uh, it's a massive star near the end of its life. Um, it's entered its helium burning phase where helium is fused into carbon and oxygen. So if you want the, uh, the scientific stuff, the scientific nuclear processes that are going on, there's a probably a quite a, um, a high level description of it. Um, so enormous size swelling up to many hundreds of solar diameters. And I think, yeah, well, it says their solar radius is uh, 1420, which is absolutely colossal. Um, interestingly though, the outer reaches of this star is quite cool, so typically 3500 to 4500 Kelvin, so that's, that kind of makes me ask, why exactly am I this far away from it? Why has the game put me this far away from it? Why can't I be at um, three light seconds away? And what would that look like? I imagine it would be just a if I was to if I was three seconds of light uh, light seconds away from sorry if I was three light seconds away from this now, I imagine as I looked in that direction and that direction and in fact up and all around, it would be a endless wall of fire. I probably wouldn't even be able to see the curvature of it. Um, now maybe the heat wouldn't be enough to cook my ship at that distance because I'm pretty sure I've been closer to hotter stars and you know the ship is being okay uh, but perhaps the I wouldn't be able to escape its gravity maybe I don't know I'm sort of speculating as to why the game puts me here um, it would be really interesting if there wasn't actually a reason and Frontier did change that one day it'd be nice to come back to this so in real life in the real galaxy uh, this star is on the brink of going supernova or hypernova even and because it's losing so much of its mass every every day it's a relatively young star and I think that when these things go bang they result in either a neutron star or in the case of Canis Majoris some people have theorized it will actually result in a black hole because the forces um, in the core of the stars that collapse will crush all of the matter down so small it will just result in an object so dense it will create a singularity. And I find that fascinating. Excellent. Right, so there's another star in this system which I'm going to go and have a look at because it can offer um, some good context, I think. And this one is a brown dwarf. And this... It's quite a long way away, 11,000 light seconds away, so that's fairly long, you know, relative to um, a typical star system that might be inhabited. So more interestingly as well, if that was at the centre of our galaxy, where our sun is at the moment, it would expand out to uh, apparently it would expand out to where Jupiter's uh, orbit is at the moment so that's how big it is so we wouldn't be alive anymore unless we had spaceships so this is another interesting thing is you know I'm going fairly quickly in fact I'm slowing down because I'm nearing nearing this star and, I'm, and despite the speed I'm still this star is still there, it's still enormous. And of course because VR is offering this up to me at uh, a one-to-one -one, uh, scale, it really does feel extremely imposing. 
I would get out my my chair and have a have a look around, but I'm getting fairly close to this one now, and I don't want to hit it. I've already lost enough of my hull crashing into stars. I'm getting better at judging the distance, but it, I'm still not. Uh, I still make a bit of a mistake and think, oh, I can get a little bit closer, and then bang. So my original goal was to go around the galaxy to explore far off places, but chances are I'm going to probably blow my ship up before I get there. <laughs> it's still there! <laughs> 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 it's, 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 so, it's so big, it's hilarious. Right, let's uh, try and approach this without bumping into it. Now, I think that this star is actually um, smaller than normal. This is a really, really titchy, titchy star. Um, brown dwarfs are generally small anyway, because I think that they've actually exhausted all of their hydrogen or they've burnt they've they've lost their outer layers either that or they burn cool I'm not I'm not quite sure um, but generally I think these stars are fairly small but this one is particularly small which is quite interesting because in one system we have a juxtaposition between a teeny tiny star and probably one of the largest stars we'll, we'll ever encounter So I'm 0 0.4 light seconds away, which is flipping close. So I'm not, not going to get any closer to it. And having said that, I just did. So I'm just going to throttle right back and try and turn it around. I'm not quite sure. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> okay. Bear with me while I uh, maneuver my ship into a position where we can see them both. So I'm at 0.3, I mean, I'm getting really close to this thing, so it is absolutely tiny. Go and have a look in the system map in a second and see what its solar radius is. Now, I don't think the solar radius is um, anything related to our sun. I think it's, um, it's something to do with the depth of the, um, the outer optical layer. And I don't understand the science, and I'm not going to pretend to. <laughs> there you go. So this is this is similar to watching the transit of Venus from Earth. You got this tiny little thing moving across this great big bright disk, and um, except you know we're not on a planet hundreds of light seconds away from another distant world. We're right up right up to um, right up to this star. Okay, I'm getting a little bit too close now, so I'm just going to spin around or put Major B on the right hand side there. So, at 0.47 light seconds, this little brown dwarf is still um, a lot, lot smaller than, um, than Canis Majoris. And if we target that, <laughs> we are 11,700 light seconds away. So, I mean, that right there is a testament to how big, how big that star is, because 11,000 light seconds is a, a quite a distance. In fact, a lot of people wouldn't even bother going that distance if there was something out there and go, mm, can I be bothered to travel there and explore it? No, probably not. So that is impressive. That's extremely impressive. So, um, just having a look, quick look in the system map at what this star's specs are. So a solar radius of 0.233, it's fairly small. So uh, it's a class Y dwarf, um, it's the coolest of the brown stars. Oh, so, okay, so there's different variations of brown stars. So yeah, that is a very cold, cold little lump of gas. So I'm probably going to leave that video here now, or this video here now rather, and um, for my next stop I might have a look at Bernard's Loop, which is somewhere... I 
Somewhere down there. Uh, anyway, it's a big, big red nebula. You can't miss it. In inhabited space, it looks like the um, um, it's the big crescent one in the sky. Which there it is. <laughs> Um, so it's that big crescent nebula you see in the sky. It looks kind of like an eye. It's got um, a sort of a, a, another smaller nebula inside it, but it's actually comprised of lots of lots of different nebulas. Um, so I might head that way. It's about a thousand light years away. Uh, I'm, uh, so I'll head over there and see see what that's like. However, I have been told that since a certain update which I can't remember what the number of that was, um, it is a little hard to navigate. So there's um, a whole region of that called the Hades Sector, and now it's all just full of brown stars, which is basically one of those things. Um, and you can't fuel from them, so it's very difficult to navigate across it. Um, but nevertheless, I'll have a look, and hopefully you'll join me then. So uh, thanks for watching, and hope you found this video interesting. If you uh, are in the exploration game and you haven't been to VY Canis Majoris, I'd certainly recommend coming here because it is a, a marvellous spectacle. And, um, well, I, uh, I will leave it there, so I'll see you next time.